So tonight we are going to start on part two of my kingdom government discussion. Now, about three weeks ago, we started in our part one. And in our part one, I said God's plan to save the world. And God does have a plan to save the world. There's no question about it. And we wanted to lay out the scripture in all of this because unfortunately the, a, lot, um, a lot of the churches and a lot of the governments have been trying to convince us that the church is not a place to understand government. That government is supposed to be separate from the church. And that is definitely not in the Bible. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. That's why Jesus calls it the kingdom. Kingdom, by definition, is government. And we covered that last, last message and showed clearly in Scripture that this is the purpose that He has for us. And that's something that we need to understand. We've got to get this paradigm shift to understand what is our purpose on the earth. And it's not just to, we're not just looking here to survive, we're looking to win because God has a plan for victory. And He's manifesting that plan, and what a time to be alive. So we talked last week that uh, in, in January 20th, in 2017, President Trump got up and did, for his inaugural speech, and the first thing he said was, I'm not here to uh, transfer power from one administration to the other. I'm here to transfer power from the administration to the people. And it starts here today, and it starts right now, right here. And that was the start. Now, I believe that that was not the end of it. That was the start of it. Because what is the problem? As we talked about last week, the problem is the people of God were not ready to take it. I mean, the, the people were not ready. If the government just walked away, everything would fall apart because we're saying, hey, we're not supposed to do this. That's somebody else's job. And that's the problem. So, and plus, we didn't know much. We didn't understand what was going on. We thought, oh, those guys are taking care of us up there. Well, what we've learned over the past seven years, and that's the way God works. He gives us seven years. And he says, when Trump said it, he prophesied it starts here and it starts now. Seven years later after that is January of 2024. And so we're right now after that seven years. Notice we've had three and a half years of blessing and three and a half years of cursing. Does that sound biblical to you? So can you see how all this is playing out to prepare us? And now we're supposed to be ready because we've gone through our seven-year kingdom school. We've learned a tremendous amount in the last seven years. Are we ready to take our place in the kingdom and manifest the kingdom? Are we ready to cross the Jordan instead of perishing in the wilderness and taking the kingdom? Because that is where we are right now. I mean, literally right now. And so what we did last week was we went through the scripture to show that. And verse by verse, not because you guys don't understand that, because I think we need to lay out clear verses to understand what we're doing because each of you has to go out there. And we've got to convince the, the people in the church the churches that are out there, your church, that the scripture clearly says that it's about us, that we are the bride and we are supposed to be a victorious bride. And we're not here to try to survive. We're here to overcome. Yeah. And that he has a plan to overcome. All this is for us. All this, as a matter of fact, the 6,000 years is for us. It's to prepare a bride for the king. A bride who will rule and reign with him, to have, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish for eternity. And to sit by his side on the throne to rule and reign with him. And we are in kingdom school. And congratulations, you've survived the seven years of kingdom school. Now are you ready to rule? Because it's time. There's going to be a shift because you can't let the government fall apart until something else is ready. Well, it's falling apart, so we better be ready. Because somebody's got to take, if you throw out all the crooks, what's going to be left? <laughs> exactly. So you see the problem here. So we need to be ready to step up. It is about the kingdom. So we're going to look at part two of this and get the shift and understand. And I'm going to go through some scripture to try to continue to discuss how do we understand this and how can we share it with other people that that's what God is about. He's here to find a bride and not everybody's going to be the bride. Remember, we, we covered that scripture. Uh, five were foolish and five were wise. Well, the five wise ones are the ones who are prepared right now. That's the bride. 
That's the ones who's going to rule and reign by his side. That's the whole purpose of this creation, is for him to have a family and a kingdom and a government to rule over it. So that's the plan. So in part two, and by the way, our key scripture is, the time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news, the gospel. Repent means to change your mind. And I'm not just talking about the bad guys over there who said, I'm, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. Repentance is not saying I'm sorry. It's changing your mind and seeing things differently. So in part two here, it's his plan is we his people. That's his plan. That's how he wants to govern, through his people. And in this nation, you can see, which is only, what, 250 years old out of, what, 6,000 years of trying to build a governmental bride? But what we did was we actually built a model of this. We had godly people and our forefathers that laid out a model of this to rule by the people. But, of course, it only works if the people are God's people because that's where the unity comes. So if this is the plan, we've been talking about Scripture, we'll look a little bit more of how that is in the Bible. So last time we did talk about America as a model. America, one nation under God, and his, that's his plan, a nation under God. Now, nations are important to him. That's how he stopped the Tower of Babel, by breaking them up into nations. And nations are governments and people. And he wants to give every government, every nation, a chance to accept his kingdom model for government. And uh, they probably won't do it, if you've read the book. Uh, but he did give us a book and explained it to us. So the scripture here in Psalm 33, uh, verse of David, who understands kingdom. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. Now, notice I underlined that. What does that mean, his own inheritance? That means that he has chosen people. He's choosing people right now to inherit his kingdom. When he shows up, he's going to put people in charge. As a matter of fact, he's putting people in charge even now. And he's saying, hey, I'm going to build a, a, a kingdom here. I do not believe, even though, yes, we've gone through a seven-year period, it wasn't the tribulation. This isn't the revealing of Jesus. Because if it's the revealing of Jesus, it's all over, folks. There's no repentance at that point. When he comes, doom. That's it. It's done. Judgment. This is the revealing of the bride. This is the revealing of his bride. That We are in that process of the selection process and education process right now, and you don't want to miss it. So the people he has chosen as his own inheritance, he is choosing right now who is going to rule and reign with him. And that's what we looked at the scripture last week out of Matthew 25, red letters. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. That's government. And all nations will be gathered before him. There's the nations. And he will separate them. And that's the nations. Separate them one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right, that's the ones who follow him, and the goats on his left. So right now, just you see which one you want to be. Do you want to be on the right or you want to be on the left? Right. This is in the Bible. <laughs> then the king, who will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. That means we become the government prepared for you from the foundations of the world. It was always his plan to create this earth and all of this stuff to have a bride and a government so that he can go off and create and we can be, we can be by his side to rule and reign over all the creations that will come forth from here on out. Maybe populating the universe, who knows. Then he will also say to those on his left, depart from me, you accursed people, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So now we see the difference between the right and the left, right there in the Bible. So notice, prepared before the foundations. How do we know that? How about Genesis 1.28? God has a plan and still has a plan to give dominion to man. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. 
Now, of course, that's to have children, but it's not just to have children. It could be to go out and get people saved, right? Get out, be fruitful, and multiply. Multiply in the kingdom and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over every living thing that moves on the earth. That was the plan from the very beginning, and it's still his plan. That's what he raised us for. We don't understand that this is just a, a, a temporary period here, the 6,000 years and maybe the seventh with the millennium. But we're going to go into a situation where he's looking for someone to share his creation with. And he's looking for a government that will continue as he goes out and creates. And this is that one opportunity. And he's choosing right now who that is. Can you see the plan? He laid it all out. You say, well, God, why don't you do something? He says, I'm doing it. I'm sorting out who's going to be my bride, and I'm preparing you to do the part that I've called you to do. So that was his plan from the beginning. Now, David understood this. And so David, another psalm is uh, from David, because David's psalms are basically uh, God's art of war. Um, just instead of Sun Tzu, he has his own version called the Psalms. And it'll teach us literally how to do battle spiritually and naturally even. Because David is a man after his own heart. And we need to be also. So he said, What is man that you think of him? And son of man that you are concerned about him? Yet you have made him a little lower than you, yourself, God. In other words, we are made in God's image, a little lower. But he wants someone to share his eternal life with, so he wants someone in his image. And you crown him with glory and majesty. That means he's going to crown us with glory and majesty. He wants a glorious bride. You have him rule over the works of your hands, and you have put everything under his feet. Can you see the plan here? We've been lied to, folks. We've been lied to. This is our role. Government is our role. It's about kingdom. It always has been, and of course, surprise, surprise. They told us, no, your job is to stay inside those little four walls. And you just take care of each other. You're not, you're not supposed to be messing with government. Lie. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Jesus even taught us to pray. The very thing that we all, everybody prays, right? But did they understand what it says? In this matter, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, not the government, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, is that that's pretty clear, right? I mean, isn't that what he's trying to do? Is that for now or is that for when he returns? That's now, right? That's why we're praying it as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Power and kingdom and glory. So we're supposed to be praying for this. As a matter of fact, he finishes off the chapter by saying, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. Which notice, when he prayed, what was the first thing he prayed? Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Why? Because that's the answer to all of the problems. Yes, you can go out there and try to figure out how to grow your own food, and you can figure out all how to survive and these types of things. But the answer is to build his kingdom, and then we'll have all of those things. In the United States, isn't that what we did? Didn't we build a kingdom so that now we got food in the stores, we got all these things, we got all these technologies? Because, you see, that's the answer. That was, that's the, what fills these needs. So, I don't know about you, but yes, maybe I could grow a few things. But I, I don't want to spend my energy doing that. What I want to do is understand God's calling, and I want to take our nation back. That's where I want to spend my energy. Because I'm not looking just to survive for an extra couple of years. It's time to win. I mean, that's a Canaan. Remember the problem with the, the spies? I don't want to be one of the, the ten. So, no. Let's do it. Well, I'm, I'm going to be looking at Ephesians because this is the critical book. Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians, is where Paul explains what the last day's church should look like. And it's very, very important to understand this because there's something different about the plan here in these last days. Jesus came and dealt with people at an individual level, right? 
he cast out a lot of demons out of people, right? But what about powers and principalities? Can you just cast those out? No, you can't. Why? Because God has a plan on how you can take them down, and it's in Ephesians. And that's what we're going to look at. And I'll show you that. That's his plan. I pray that the eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you see this, so that you will know the hope of his calling. Now, that means not what he's supposed to do. That means his calling on you. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance that he wants to give us in the saints? The riches of what he wants to give us. And what is the boundless greatness of his power toward those who actually believe what he said? In other words, he wants to empower you to do what he's called you to do. It's his power to take back. It was his power to take Canaan, and it's his power to take the U.S. of A. There's no difference. This is his plan. These are in accordance with the workings of the strength of his might. Do we believe it? That's what he's saying. Which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead... In other words, he basically took authority and said no and, and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. So he set him up in a high place of authority. That's what it means, seated at the right hand, right? Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Couldn't be any clearer. He said, okay, Jesus, you have all authority over heaven and earth, all power, all authority, it's yours. Now, he wants us to accept that because that's what this is about down here. Far above all rule, authority, and power, and dominion. Does that sound like the state stay in the walls and just survive, let the government do its job? No. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but the one to come. So not only are we just trying to deal with what we're going to hit, we're setting up for eternity here. And I want my place in that place of eternity. And he puts all things in subjection under his feet and made him head over all things. And then he gave it to the church. You see, how do I say that? Because he says, which is his body. So he was not just made head over all things. He was given a body which also is head over all things. Because it's him. That's what he's saying. Made him head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. So in other words, we're a part of that same position and authority seated with him in heavenly places. So this is what the prayer in Ephesians is about. To get it. And for some reason, we don't get it. We, we keep looking at this at a personal level instead of saying, what are you, how are we supposed to do this, God? Well, he tells us. So Paul goes on. Let's just go on to Ephesians 2. We've been raised up with Jesus to rule. He said, but God, rich in his mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive together with Christ. By Christ you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, you remember what that's about? Dominion, power, authority. You got it? He raised us up into that same position. So that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, of course, that's the verse that basically uh, created all our denominations, right? Isn't this what, this is basically uh, uh, what brought about the separation of the church? And that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works which he prepared beforehand, which we've just discussed what that was, so that we would walk in them, which is what? Rule and reign, right? Take dominion, multiply. Didn't we make it really clear what he, he's trying to produce here? In this period of time, he's trying to produce a bride, someone that he can have as his government by his side. And that's his 
eternal purpose for us. And we are right in the middle of that moment. So right here, he's talking about this situation. If you go on in Ephesians 2, he talks about how this is going to happen. We must join together to be his bride and his government. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. In other words, we're not just a bunch of uh, people scattered and so on. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. In other words, the key he's trying to tell us is that we're not dealing at individual. We're not out here casting out demons and just dealing at an individual level. He says, no, you are now a body and you are my family and you are my government. And you are to be working together and come together. So that's the solution. The solution is not casting out demons. It's coming together and tearing down principalities and powers as the body of Christ. And that's what he's showing us in Ephesians. And that's what we need to follow this model because this is where we are right now. Have you figured out that it's not a bunch of individual enemies out there? Have you figured out there's just not a few bad guys out there causing all this trouble? Can you see the coordination of the enemy and how they've come together in large powers and principalities across just about every part of our lives? From the medical to the entertainment to the government, everywhere. It's, it just goes across everything. The media. That's because it's a large power of conspiracy across the top. It's not a theory. It's a real conspiracy. Well, how do you defeat something that big? I got news for you. The individual is not going to cast down powers and principalities. No, he wants a body of Christ coming together in unity. And that's the solution. And that's what he's showing us right here. Having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, I believe that what that means there is he's talking about the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament. The apostles being the words of the new and the prophets of the old. So, in other words, the two together have built a foundation with Christ Jesus, which goes across both, being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Okay, let's look at that. Uh, We've done some teaching here about the new temple, right? I think for those who have seen my teaching on the new temple. The new temple is our body, right? The old temple was a building, you know, made out of, uh, you know, out of the... The inner court, the holy place, and the holy of holies, and we're body, soul, and spirit. Same thing. You know, the the model is perfect. It goes across. The the law was kept in the holy of holies. Now the law is kept in our spirit. You know, it's, it's a model. So we are the temple, right? But what he's saying is that for what we're dealing in now, it's not just... It's not what he wants to do. He wants to bring each one of us and assemble us together into a large temple and hold even more spirit than just the individuals. So he's now starting to assemble something together and make a bigger temple, which is the body of Christ, which is the bride. And that's the solution, is the bride. But it's us coming together because now together we form a body but we also form a soul, and we also form a spirit. You see, a nation has a body, and it has a soul. And to some degree, it has a spirit that's ruling it. And he's dealing with nations here. This is much bigger than individuals. That's what a kingdom is about. So we've got to understand that the solution is that we built, be built into a body, that we can hold much more of the spirit, And literally, we have a soul, a collective soul, as the bride of Christ. So that's what he's saying that it's going to take to win this battle. Let's go on with uh, John 17. He said it this way. Jesus prayed that we would join as one. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word. That's the prophets and the apostles that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, I in you. That they also may be one in us. The world may believe that you sent me. In other words, he's saying, hey, when you join together, it's going to be a manifestation of who I am, and the world will know it's me. 
And that's what's happening here. And the glory which you gave me, I've given to them. He's going to glorify his bride, and that's the season we're in right now. Can we be a glorious bride for him? That they may be one as we are one, I and them, you and me, and they may be made complete or perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you've loved me. So this joining together is the answer. And, of course, Jesus prayed it. And what do you think the chances are of Jesus getting what he prays? It's going to happen. And we're in the midst of it right now. So, but if, if you're sitting there under a steeple and you're hiding in the little square, trying to say, well, we, we can't associate over here. We've got to protect ourselves. No. It's got to be the body of Christ. That's the only thing that's going to take down this power and principality. See, you understand, giants are actually to our favor. You, we don't realize that with lands full of giants, well, David, David understood the concept. He was just delivering sandwiches to the front, and he sees a giant up there. And what happened? Well, God had produced a giant. Why? Well, because the giant revealed who David was. The giant allowed him with one stone to take out an entire army. He just rolled all the things up into one, so poop, take it all down at one time by one kid. So you see, when he rolls it all together like that, he's setting it up so that we can take it all down at once with simple stones. So I'm just telling you, that's the way the enemy works. And that's what God does. He sets up giants because that's the way you can defeat them. So... He's, you can see clearly what he's doing here, that he's joining us together as one. That we may be a force, an army. And I, I think that's our plan. So that's why we need prophets and apostles, and we're going to cover that in the second half, because I'm only going to do the first three chapters here. The second four chapters, of, as you know, explain how this is going to be done. The fivefold ministry, the bride that he talks about in chapter 5, and finally, how to take down powers and principalities in chapter 6. So he's, you understand that's the process that we're going through right now. So let's go to Ephesians 3. To me, the very least of all saints, this is Paul, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to enlighten all people. There's enlighten the eyes of your heart. Enlighten all people as to what the plan of the mystery is is, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. So here's his mystery. The mystery is he's trying to produce a bride for himself. So that the multifaceted wisdom of God might be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places and high places. According to his eternal purpose. So what's his eternal purpose? To manifest himself through a body. Notice he says multifaceted or manifold wisdom. Why? Because no one person is going to be able to carry the glory, the wisdom, the power, the authority of God. But by having a, a body that is very, very different, you can see the multifacets, the, the multi-dimensions of God. You can experience this dimension from this person and this dimension from this person and this person. Same spirit, but a different experience expression of him. So he's big enough to actually express himself differently through every person and yet be one. It shows the power and the glory of God. So he's got multifaceted wisdom. The enemy doesn't. They're hierarchical. They're working off whatever the big guy says. You watch the news? Do you see multifaceted or you see exactly the same words coming from everybody? Does that tell you that they're a hierarchical, top-down situation? Do you understand that's not who we are? He expresses himself through the Spirit, each one of us. We, the, we're in asymmetrical warfare here. You can't, there's no head he can take out because the head is Jesus. We don't have a hierarchy here. He is our hierarchy, and each one of us can report directly to him. So we've got, we do win. It's, it's very clear. He set this whole thing up. I mean, how biblical is this thing? Totally. 
So he's, his, it says this is in accordance with his eternal purpose, which is to produce a bride for himself. So obviously he wants to use us to show this wisdom that the world is not going to have. So how's the world doing on their wisdom part? Can you see what's going on here? We're supposed to be that wisdom. We're supposed to be that voice of the king right now. Right now. That's why we, his people, are the only hope for this nation. Period. It says, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. This is his plan. So he gave me a word on uh, the 1st of February, and I'm just going to go through that, sort of close with that. And this is what he said. He said, in this season, I'm revealing to you the fullness of who I am. And I think we just talked about who he is, his glory, his power, his authority. For many years and seasons, the world has not known me. And they have treated their belief in me as an image of their righteousness. I'm a Christian, therefore I'm righteous. Yet, though they believe in my goodness and my holiness, they know only images and idols of who I am. We build some church or something to make an image and an idol, and we say, this is who God is. No, God's king. He has all power and all authority. But in this season of revelation, and we can take that a lot of ways, it's, have, you, have you noticed it sort of looks like the revelation? It's not, by the way, that's not the, the, the book of destruction. It's the book of the revealing of Christ. Well, we're in the revelation of the bride. So it's a season of revelation. Yeah, is there trouble in the book of revelation? Yeah, but it's a revealing. And that's why he's revealing himself as king. Now he's revealing the bride. In the season of revelation, I'm revealing my plan, my purpose, and my person. I believe that's what he's doing right now. That they may honor me and fear me. And that they may honor you and fear you and those that I send. Do you understand? We're supposed to manifest the character of God. His power, His authority. This is the world He's giving us. All professions and roles of man that the world has defined must see me as their creator and master. They must know me in what they do and who they are. For what does man have and do that I have not created and provided for? All things that are built are built of the knowledge and materials that I created. Do you understand everything that we do, everything that we built, came from something that he has already done or said? And yet we're claiming, wow, look what we've done. We've invented this great thing. No, you've discovered something that God has already designed and laid out there for you. Some assembly required. <laughs> but it's his. I mean, the, the silicon that we built all the electronics with, when do you think it got that power to conduct electricity the way it does? How about when it was created back thousands of years ago? Right? I mean, does anything new come upon the earth? We got some sort of asteroid or something that came in and created something? No. I mean, this is his creation. All those things are part of him. So we got to, must see that everything we do, he has already laid out for us. We also got to see that everything the enemy is doing wrong right now is because he has an answer for it. Yeah. And he's basically using it to show us that he has an answer. So whenever you see something that they're doing is stupid and wrong and evil, you say, well, God, I know you have the answer for this or you wouldn't be showing us this because that's part of the way we learn. So we're learning this. Remember, he's preparing us to rule and reign. So we're getting a great education right now in what not to do. And we're even understanding why we don't do it. So that's where he is right now. And he continues... All knowledge is just knowing what I have said and what I have done. Therefore, man must seek me first and my righteousness to have true and lasting wisdom 
success, and prosperity. That's the design. That's why our nation worked. Know me in all things and reveal me in all things, and I will make you pillars of truth, wisdom, and righteousness. Ask me, and I will reveal to you the secrets and mysteries of the ages, that you may be a witness of my power and my glory. For I'm revealing myself through you, as I did through my son, that the world may behold my wisdom, my power, and my glory. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you're, you're shifting our thought process to see things differently, Lord. We thank you that you've set this whole thing up to prepare us, Lord, and to show us how we can manifest your glory, how to manifest your kingdom on this earth. We thank you, Lord, that, that, you, that you're helping us cross this Jordan and take the land of milk and honey, Lord, back. We thank you even for the giants that you've manifest, knowing that you've got a plan to take them down, that a, when a giant falls, it creates a big hole and a big situation. And it reveals who you are, Lord, and your people. We want to be a part of this, Lord, and we thank you. So we ask you just to help us, Lord. Help us to pay attention, educate us, and prepare us, Father. And prepare us by your Spirit to walk in those things that you want us to walk in today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.